Welcome to Meditation and Aliens with Doro and Matt, a webcast that explores everything we currently know about the truth about aliens, human history, reality, consciousness, and the role meditation can do to help us understand all these things, and how we might all work together to build the best world possible for all beings, human or non-human alike. Meditation and Aliens is hosted by me, Matt Reddy. I'm an amateur ufologist. I have a degree in philosophy. I'm the creator of HiveOne.net. I'm the author of a book called Revolutionary Mindfulness. That's about meditation and activism. I'm also an elected public hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. Each week, I am joined by Doro Kiley, longtime meditator, a meditation teacher, and an experiencer with many stories and life coach extraordinaire. You can find more about Doro at her website, creationcoach.com. Now, on to the show. All right, we are back with another episode of Meditation and Aliens with Doro and Matt. How you doing, Doro? I'm doing really well. I have been sort of researching uh, the mantis species, uh, and I learned that there's three different kinds, and they show uh, hieroglyphs uh, all across the this country and and all over the world so this seems to be some kind of a species that's been around a long time and they say native american cultures used to call them the ant people Mm because i guess they had some underground uh, habitation or something yeah but so that's what i have just been doing just before we we got on here so and you're finding there's three different kind of mantis. Yeah, they they say there's the green ones who are actually enslaved uh, by the by the Orions and the Greys. I mean, you know, who knows if any of this is true? But I, this is what I was looking at. Then there's the white uh, species of mantis, which is much taller, and they are also being used with the zeta reticuli and all. And the one that was for me most interesting they described as the black humanoid mantis which i think was the one that uh, i was exposed to as a child um around 63 maybe or 61 somewhere around there i was i was quite young um but yeah they are supposed to be assisting somehow in the awakening of consciousness in this planet and um part of also part of a hybridization program so i just found it fascinating that's where my my brain went um so it's interesting Mm -hmm. so we're the three tell me that again there's you got three different mantids and one's black one's green the green ones were enslaved by the grays and the black ones were that was the one you saw as a child yeah that i think that you know i mean who knows it it was so dark and scary at the time and i was so young i probably re you know reinvented it a million times in my brain but the way i remember it was um the way they described the the black mantis more humanoid and that makes sense that they'd be called the ant people if they were black as opposed yeah to green. um and where were you physically located when you saw the black in new york and i was just a little girl i was you know maybe seven years old and i was in bed um and uh the light the open door to the hallway was lit there was a light in the hallway and i opened my eyes and there was a very tall you know went to the top of the door frame of what i would describe as the silhouette of this sort of really tall insect looking thing it had a very triangular head and and large slanted eyes um and I and I remember it had like strange wrists. So, but I, and I don't know, you know, the imagination, you know, who knows? I kind of wrote it off as a dream for just decades, and until now, I start hearing other people's stories, the same yeah. thing, and I'm like, wow. And you, I remember we've talked about this before, but uh, you said you remember kind of asking it to leave, like, and it. You felt is that what you said? Because you don't feel like it came in, and is that right? It it was it wasn't. It scared the daylights out of me, and so you know, I just ducked under my covers. I pulled the covers over my head, and just 
you know, hoped it would go away. And then when I peaked, it was gone. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah interesting. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that is such a, I, I'm, I want to, I so want to find out more about them. Um, mm-hmm. the, the other thing that I was experiencing uh, back then, and this had happened uh, uh, several times and, and it was, it was really frightening. I would be in bed and um, I would see something almost like this dark circle opening up on the ceiling and over in the corner and it would just get bigger and bigger and it was like this black energy it's like and I thought oh that was going to pull me in and and that happened so many times that that when it did happen I would jump out of bed run down the hallway jump in the bed with my parents and I'd have to squeeze really tight down in between my mom and dad so that it couldn't get me um but I don't remember if it ever got me I don't have any memory of being abducted but you know who knows they they probably wiped my memory I don't know yeah there's so many stories that um involve memory wiping technology like it, it's so it's it's really hard to know what really happened if mm-hmm. that technology exists yeah um, yeah yeah so that sounds very much like uh abduction scenarios so it's yeah but i wonder it, if you, i could get a, a some kind of a regression hypnotic system uh you know session where they put me under hypnosis does anybody do that (laughs) oh my gosh yeah they're specialists in that that's how they get so many of the details of these abduction stories i mean you know we could do a little research that would be worth i think you would find uh personally i think i mean i think you'd want to know wow i could open up a whole can of worms (laughs) yeah yeah i think that's might be something to look into i did a hypnotic regression for past lives uh, about a month ago and uh, first time that I'd ever been successfully hypnotized with a professional. And yeah. it, I mean, it wasn't, it was really more like a guided meditation because I didn't feel like I lost, I never lost, you know, any sort of control. It was, it was more like just having someone help you really, really get relaxed and meditate. And then I just had to keep an open mind and try to be patient with myself about what you know, if anything came up and, uh, but I, I was just patient with myself. I sort of went in with that attitude of just see, uh, just, I'm not going to like make up stuff. If nothing, no images or anything come to mind. I'm not going to make up stuff. And, but the other side of that is I had to be just willing to, even if it was just a, a flash or a, barely a flash of anything, I just had to say it because it's like, you know, immediately when I had some flash of something, I was like, oh, I'm making that up. But I was like, no, I didn't really make that up. Just say what I saw. You know? and yeah. Once I did that, I got on a roll and I ended up seeing three different past lives. Oh, that's <laughs> neat. I had one done. One. I just saw one past life, but it was traumatic. So she pulled me out of it pretty quickly. Uh, um, oh, wow. That's a whole, we could do a whole podcast on that, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it kind of overlaps with a uh, topic that uh, I'm going to get into, but is there anything, any more details you wanted to share from? Not so much. I did want to look into that one website that you had mentioned, the far site. Was that yeah, it? Yeah. Right. Oh, I, I am absolutely going to talk about oh, that. Oh, good. Little, okay. I have a little audio uh, video clip I can play because they have trailers up on YouTube. And so I'm going to play part of one that'll give uh, everyone sort of an introduction to it. Oh, uh, good. In fact, the founder of the Farsight Institute is this guy named uh, Courtney Brown, and they are an institute that does remote viewing and to study every topic that is of interest and tons of them about history and uh, aliens and disclosure and the government, the JFK assassination. I mean, everything. And it's a it is a rabbit hole of rabbit holes. Wow. I want to learn how to do remote viewing. Yeah. Well, it's when I did that that hypnotic regression, it really opened my mind to the the possibility of it because it, it really worked. I really started to see like how you could just trust what your mind comes up with to show you something. And it, I mean, you know, 
I mean, the remote viewing thing, I was like, this could be just sort of, I was facilitated through coming up with three past life stories that really seemed powerful and meaningful to me. Maybe I was co-creating it, but I don't know. I don't know. And, um, but it, but you know, also all this, all the stories of abductions and everything you're hearing in ufology, there's so much evidence of telepathy being possible. So yeah. there's so much evidence that information can get to our minds in ways we don't understand. And so that opens up my mind to remote viewing could be real. And there's, there's also a ton of evidence the CIA worked on remote viewing and they used it. And they use it. Yeah. So if they're using it, you feel like it's gotta be something to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so, but I've never really looked into it. Oh, and Lou Elizondo, you know, the, he's one of the premier figures in the UFO uh, whistleblower community. He really led the charge and, you know, before David Grush and everything. And, and uh, he's been involved with remote viewing. He's never wanted to talk about it. He was on the, the theories of everything podcast and he talked about everything, but he, at, at one of the podcasts at the beginning, he said to the guy, to the guy, Kurt, the host of it, he said, the one topic I do not want you to ask me about, and I'm not going to talk about is remote viewing. Ooh. And so that's, and he said it was because it was private, but it, it's also such a woo woo topic. I don't think he wanted it to lose his, make him lose his credibility. Okay. And, uh, and Hal put off uh, another major figure in the history of this topic um he's also apparently been deeply involved with remote viewing but again he hasn't really talked about it a lot um in any case so this takes us to the topic i want to share i've never really looked into remote viewing but this trailer came up on youtube for the farsight institute where they and i, I want to play some of it and um where they did a project what they do is they pick a subject and then they have three of their best remote viewers uh do a remote viewing on it and um the way it works is someone writes the target down on a piece of paper and they I, I, effectively it works like this they write the target down and they um put it on a piece of paper and they put it in a sealed envelope and then all they do is they just write a a number a random number identifier on the envelope to create a label for the target. So the label could be something like X3Y slash 158, whatever. And that is all they tell the remote viewer. Your target is, you know, X35138. Wow. And the, yeah. And then the remote viewer does a, a this, they do a meditation practice and they, they might be given a few other things like your, your target has, um, well, they might have, sometimes they have a person guiding them, like, uh, because when you do a, apparently a remote viewing session, you, you start to, you start to see either structures and they have very generalized language for it, whether it's, uh, structures that are, um, on the, on a surface or they're disconnected surface, uh, structures in space. And then you have subjects. Like if you see a being of any sort during the remote viewing, they call it a subject. And they're like, the subject A is standing there and then maybe surrounded by a bunch of other people. And then they might, their focus target might be, um, they, so they might know they're trying to get to a specific subject or a specific event or, or a specific concern related to this subject and event. And so they, they might be giving some very general things of what they're trying to get to. So my, my, I have a question. Is this, can you remote view into the past or the future or is it present moment oriented? Well, I thought it was just a present moment thing, but yeah. apparently they can do any time and place. Wow. And so, yeah. So th this, um, so they did the Lacerta files, uh, the, the, and the Lacerta Files is a supposed interview between a reptilian alien and a guy in December 1999. And here, I'm just going to play some of the um, uh, trailer here and to give people a little taste of what drew me in to actually um, to listen to this and actually go down this rabbit hole. Uh, so how about I just play a little bit of that? Yeah, yeah. And did you say this was December 1999? Uh, this, the 
this remote viewing was done just last year, but the event, the interview, the Lacerta file was from December 1990. That's when the Lacerta interview oh, apparently the Lacerta, happened. Okay, got it. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Farsight's monthly series, Galactic Mysteries. This series focuses on extraterrestrial matters, both near and far in this galaxy. I am Yemi Janae from Farsight. So today we are focusing on the Lacerta files. Now, let me explain. Starting in December 1999, a female reptilian met with a man who called himself Olay for an interview. The meetings took place in Sweden. Olay took notes during the meeting, and those notes were later sent to friends in Finland to be translated into English and apparently some other languages. The reptilian female called herself Lacerda, which is not her real name at all, but it was easier to pronounce than her actual name at that time. Just by reading the interview notes, there was no way to actually know if the meetings took place. One simply had to read the words and hope that Olay was telling the truth. The notes came in two files, one for each day, since there were two meetings. Olay went out of his way to distribute those files free of charge throughout the internet, and a small community of people who read the list of files were believers. Others were skeptics, and yet others didn't believe it at all. But most people on Earth simply never heard anything about it and were never exposed to this information. I am part of most people until recently. <laughs> So, according to the notes, Lacerda was a student of human behavior, and she wanted to conduct an experiment to see what would happen to the information that she gave in those two interviews. In particular, she wanted to observe the human response to this information. Now, this is how it would have ended for us at Farsight normally. There was no physical confirmation that the meetings actually took place, but our director at Farsight, Courtney Brown, read the list of the files, and he found that a significant amount of the content matched a number of our results in a lot of our remote viewing projects. So he became curious as to whether or not the meetings actually took place. Since we could not interview LA directly, he had no alternative but to create a Farsight project addressing the Lacerda files, and then to have our remote viewers go and take a look and see what actually happened. And that is exactly what we ended up doing. Now, understand that I was a remote viewer on this project, and just like all the other remote viewers who participated with this project, I had no idea what the project was about until after all of my remote viewing was completed. I also had never read the Lacerda files, so this was all new to me. Well, once all of the remote viewing was done, including all the remote viewing recordings and sessions, it became obvious that the meetings between this reptilian female named Lacerda and Olay actually did happen. It was real. Now, don't worry, that is not a spoiler alert. By now, the fact that the meetings actually happened should be obvious to you, since we were not published this project unless we came up with something worthwhile to talk about. But the big surprise is in what other information came across in these meetings. This stuff is deep, and you just have to watch the session for yourself in order to understand how deep it actually is. The actual target for this project is Lacerda when she is giving the information that is eventually recorded as the Lacerda files. The goal of the project was to describe Lacerda herself as well as Alay, and also the environment where the meeting took place. That is standard practice for all Farsight remote viewers when they go into a new target. Go to a location, look at what is there, and figure out what is going on. The results are astonishing. All of the remote viewers perceived the meeting, all corroborating reports. The viewers were also given pre-designated movement exercises that they needed to do during their sessions. Those movement exercises told no information to the viewers at all. They were based on page numbers of the interviews as described by Olay. They were called moments, and the viewers were told to move to moment one, moment two, and moment three. Moment one related to the content on pages four and five of the Lacerda files, and that was mostly introductory stuff. Moment two related to the pages 12 through 14, which focused on ancient history going back, back to the ages of dinosaurs on Earth. And moment three related to pages 23 through 27, and that focused on an ET war affecting Earth. Now, the viewers were told nothing except to go to moment one or moment two or moment three. They did not know what those moments were related to, and none of them knew that they were connected to page numbers in a book. Basically, when these sessions were being done, it seemed like mostly everything went according to plan, except for myself. So I have to confess to you that when I did my session for this project, I perceived the female reptilian lady right away. All right, I just want to pause it there, see if any reaction. But I do, I'll play a little bit of what she says about what happened. But any thoughts so far? Oh, well, my goodness. She just got my curiosity up more and more. Um, no, I'm just very much listening. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll just best? keep playing. 
This okay. is, I, I listened to the full thing. She only, we're only going to get a taste here, but uh, here, I'll play the rest. Way. And she perceived me. We basically kind of just stood there looking at one another for a good while, <laughs> trying to figure each other out. At first, she was a bit rattled and a bit fearful, and she even notified the base to boost up her security since she did not know what would happen. It was highly unusual for her to be face to face with an Earth human who could sense her without any interferences or control. So after that, and after some back and forth, she basically told me that she did not want me to do any mental probes on her. She didn't like how it felt, and she somehow knew that I would do that, and that I was about to do that in a moment. The way she described it to her being mentally probed sounded a bit like rape, and I was not about to mentally rape a nice reptilian lady who politely asked me not to do that. So we agreed that we would simply ask her questions, and she would give me the answers, and we would just have a talk. But then I had to abandon any idea of doing the movement exercises to movements one, two, or three. We simply talked, and what you will see in my video session is what we talked about. Basically, this is a super interesting project, the Lacerda files. You can still find them on the internet, both in print and as an audio file. I'm totally listening to these audio files. And here you have it, real meeting that took place December 1999, except for my session where I was in 2023 while Lacerda was in 1999. I know it sounds weird, but hey, remote viewing is weird to begin with. So this is what we get. Okay, that's about all you get in the trailer, but I listened to the full session with all three remote viewers and oh my gosh really yeah so it's, so it's just like convincing right but you're not really seeing the the we're not really looking at the lacerta files right now or uh well the lacerta files is a is a you know a, a document it's a transcript really long one and but i've read it pretty carefully i, I mean i've i've like studied it it was one of the first deep rabbit holes I went into um, when I first started to realize UFOs were real. I was like, I need some, I need some, I need a huge dump of information. Does anyone out there claim to have a full story of what's going on? And Lacerda Files is one of the oldest, you know, uh, big, big sources of information I found. And, so where, um, where could the listeners find uh, the Lacerda Files to, to go through them themselves? I mean, if you just do a, a Google search for Lacerta transcript, um, you will find the. I mean, one of the top links is always this just Google document that has a copy of it. And there's, uh, yeah, I mean, there's different places. Um, that's where I first found it. It's for some reason, someone's shared this Google document. I guess I'm showing it on the screen. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. see. It. Yeah, so, so you yeah, just do a search, right? Lacerta files, it looks like a lot comes up. And it's it's out there. Um, there is, you know, some people have put it on YouTube. Um, an audio, I think there's a this Amazon Music. It looks like there's a uh, there's a few people that have turned it into an audio file that you can listen to. Um, I've um, I did I took like the entire Lacerda files and put them into Chat GPT and had to do an analysis to give me like a history of Earth based Ooh. on the Lacerda files. Um, and I published that on, uh, the, on Twitter. Um, let me see. Uh, but, but yeah. Um, so what is your, different. what is your Twitter handle? Meditation, people, Matt. Meditation, Matt. Okay. So people yeah. could find the, the Lacerda files there. Uh, you can find, um, a, let me see here. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to find my, Lacerta documents because I, I think I have I put the full Lacerta files into a document and then I did an analysis. Um, let me see here. Yeah. Okay. So this is my analysis. I'll go ahead. And, yeah. I think I already did share this uh, analysis because I asked it to here's the Lacerta file. Please write a timeline of Earth based on it. And this is what what chat GPT came up with. It said, based on the Lacerda file, here's the timeline of Earth. 65 million years ago, there was a global war between two alien species, the humanoids from Procyon and an advanced reptilian species. The war was primarily for the raw materials of Earth, especially copper. Reptilians detonated a fusion bomb in middle America, causing a nuclear winter. And that was, so Lacerda in this transcript claimed 
that there was not an asteroid that hit Earth 65 million years ago. It was a bomb. Then she says, 60 million years ago, Earth was left alone. Life started to evolve slowly, and small advanced dinosaurs evolved over 40 million years to become Lacerta's reptilian race. Then she claims 1.5 million years ago, another alien species referred to as the Elohim, which is very similar to the word Elohim, which is in the Bible. Uh, she says 1.5 million years ago, they arrived on Earth. They were interested in the unadvanced ape humanoids and decided to help them evolve faster, intending to use them as a slave race in future wars. This led to a war between the Elohim and the advanced reptilian species. And it goes on to um, 700,000 years ago, the first advanced human civilization created by the Elohim uh, existed on Earth. So that's kind of that potentially could you know correlate with Atlantis or Lemuria. And then 75,000 years ago, she says the fifth human civilization built the large triangular constructions known as the pyramids. Then 16,000 years ago, the sixth human civilization built cities. Oh, that's what she says is the ruins of which can be found today, but they beneath the seas, uh, so-called the Mini area. 8,500 years ago, seventh and current human civilization was created. So she says this is the seventh human civilization. And this is the only creation that current humans can remember and to which their religions refer. And then she says 5,000 years ago, the last battles between the advanced reptilian species and the Elogium were fought and the aliens used powerful sonic weapons to destroy the reptilians' underground cities, but the reptilians were also able to destroy many of the aliens' surface installations and bases in space. And that's just the history of Earth. There's a ton of other stuff in the document, but I was, you know, um, and then, you know, I, I had to also analyze it for what are the different shaped UFOs, and she goes into, uh, she explains there's genuine extraterrestrial ships, there's human-made UFOs, there's misinterpretation of natural phenomenon, then there's alien species UFOs, and then there's her species uh, UFOs that fly around. Um, what what do her her uh, UFOs look like? She says uh, Lacerta species has a fleet of disc shaped craft and cylindrical craft. If a, if a cylindrical craft is sighted with a blue serpent with four white wings or a dragon in the shape of a circle with seven white stars in the middle, it belongs to her species. Good other man. alien species, she says, some UFOs belong to other alien species. For example, a metallic and disc-shaped object with four white and very long processes on the underside of the ship itself portrays a kind of quasi-gravitational light manipulation. The universal force field is being shifted in the direction of simulated gravity. This is a characteristic of a genuine alien ship. She says so I, human, go ahead. I don't want to cut uh, you off. I'm the making... human-made UFOs, uh, she says especially military. These are usually triangular and built with streamlining to be steerable with a primitive recoil principle. They are built with the help of immature alien technology that was handed over to humans by extraterrestrials during the 60s and 70s. And, and like that little point right there, that is so commonly said in the UFO community that the triangular craft are human made. So this yeah. is going back to the Lacerta 1999. Her file was one of the first places to say that. But... Wow. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the document is incredible so i was just like i was like oh my gosh i hope this is real i was like i want to hear what these remote viewers get if they go back to try to look at this incident oh my goodness yes yeah. so so as you were going through the timeline um i kind of made a note of the 1.5 million years ago was it the elosions you called them well it was written elogium in the is that the Elohim? Could that be the same? Yeah, I think it is because this thing was translated from German. Um, and so I think it seems clear this is meant to she was using Elohim, which yeah, that's a biblical term, which a ton of ufology claims that is a name for an ancient species of alien. And I've heard that that the Elohim are the same as the Anunnaki. Have you ever come across that? Yeah, it sounds like that's a really strong possibility. Especially since you mentioned, or, or, or ChatGPT said that they that these uh, elosions were uh, creating a slave race. I mean, that definitely yeah. sounds like the Anunnaki. Yeah, it totally correlates with the theory or the story from the Sumerian legend of the Anunnaki created humans from apes. Yeah. You know, isn't that kind of what they? Uh, that's the same basic 
Yeah. yeah, the the way I understood it is, yeah, they came here, you know, over over uh, a million years ago, and they came for the resources, you know, digging up. Well, for some reason, this is copper you're mentioning, but I think the Elohim or the Anunnaki were after gold, probably everything they could get their hands on. But um, so, and then they were mining the planet themselves for a number of thousands of years until they decided that they they could just you know take one of the species that was already here and uh and genetically modify it as a slave to do to do the work that they didn't want to do anymore yeah yeah i I think the um one thing we have to just be able to assume about if let's just assume this really happened the lacerta really was a female reptilian that revealed herself to a human for some reason and allowed him to to interview her and to release a transcript of that interview back in 1999. If we just assume that, we also can assume she lied about some stuff ah. to protect her species. I mean, it would you're, you're if you're an alien species and you're going to reveal a, a dump of information, of course you might hide a few details that would endanger your species. Like maybe copper is not really the element that everyone, all these aliens have been fighting over for years. That would be a big reveal. Oh, by the way, this <laughs> this metal that you guys think is just whatever is like the most valuable element on Earth. Now, she's not going to just tell us that. So sure. <laughs> uh, that might have been a little deceptive. And I even think the story about gold might be a lie because because I think element 115, the, the, the metal that Bob Lazar says is key to anti-gravity craft. I think that might really be the most valuable element that these aliens might be fighting over for the years. And the, they might not have let them put into the, the Sumerian records, the real element that they were fighting. So they just say hey, it's gold. Isn't that interesting? And you know, I think it's Graham Hancock has another theory. Oh, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure it was him, but, um, uh, there is another theory out there that the gold that they were referring to might be the type of consciousness or emotional potential that we have that they can harvest and mm. they call it gold. I don't know. <laughs> we wouldn't yeah. have to do something. Yeah. Mm. And even also yeah, the gold mining might have really occurred, but it might have been a cover for the mining of something else. In mm -hmm. any case. Mm hmm. Resources. Yeah. Let me just assume there's resources on this planet that aliens might want. That just makes sense. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this, um, so I mean, this. Uh, so yeah, I listened to the full Aserta remote viewing sessions. That was the first remote viewing documentary from them that I listened to, and they have like fifty of them, fifty plus on there. And there's they have it seems at least like 10 different people that can do this remote viewing on their site, the farsight.org, Farsight Institute, founded by Courtney Brown. And uh, I've been, I don't know, I'm probably up to like five hours worth of content from them. I've, I've you know, I like listened to, uh, to all sorts of topics. They did the JFK assassination. They've done a ton on UFOs. They've done um, remote viewing on, on Trump, on Biden, what do they know about? Can you give us a little peek yeah. into what was said? Yeah. Well, um, let's just start with the Lacerta one. Okay. Um, it All three of their remote viewers saw this reptilian alien woman, but the one that we just heard from this, um, her name is... Her name is Princess something. Uh, <laughs> that's the name she goes by. But okay. she apparently is the most powerful, skilled remote viewer they have. And when she did this, the the other two, it was fascinating because they were they followed the targets. They like saw the session. They saw uh, Lacerta. They both went and then they looked deep enough. They could tell this was a reptilian woman because they got bumpy skin. It took them a little while. And they could tell the other uh, subject was a human male. Um, and but one of the remote viewers saw like three other beings there with Lacerta, but hidden from view from the male human. 
and which makes sense if you are the leader or you're a member of an alien species, you know, going to talk to a human for the first time in thousands of years, you would bring some help. Sure. In to protect you. That makes total sense. Um, and it, and they and they do this thing called a deep mind probe. When they identify a subject, they can just do a, they can just probe their brain, and they don't like get. And they it's hard to describe, but they get like feelings and attitudes and stuff like that. And so you the, you kind of have to just listen to it. But the way they describe what's going in, on inside Lacerta's mind, it is, it just it totally fits with what you would expect. It was like. She, her mind was focused on extremely big picture macro concerns of like the entire everything going on on earth the impact of this conversation on her species on everything happening on earth and his brain was completely just focused on the fact there was a reptilian alien woman standing before him talking <laughs> <laughs> you know? it was it was just fascinating to, to listen to how this was described it was and 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 uh you know, and you could get, they, they got like senses of her attitude towards him and towards humanity. She was incredibly smart, incredibly intelligent, but it got the most fascinating was when we got to this um, third remote viewing session by this woman, princess, uh, I believe that's the name she goes by where, cause when she um, started to target in on Lacerta, Lacerta saw her and that's what she just described in this. They, Lacerta is apparently so telepathic it seems that princess had a real-time telepathic talk with lacerta Mm. and this is what she got so she saw lacerta in her home where apparently she currently is and lacerta is she saw her the real form of lacerta and she said lacerta is actually not in her in her true form is all is giant like she said almost dragon like in size um, and she was able to like at one she said she was able to like touch lacerta's skin and head like lacerta let her uh do that and lacerta is went by the name gave her a different name gave her the name soraya as her name Ooh. and then um and was apparently the leader of she was like the queen of her at least tribe of reptilians and extremely um and very matronly mother-like and noble sort of and beautiful said she was an incredibly beautiful being um and extremely paranoid about the borders of her territory and she uh she described that lacerta had like AI or something that was monitoring the borders of her territory really carefully. Um, and uh, so that she almost, she would know instantly if anything outside came into the borders of her territory. Which, so do we have any idea where this territory of hers is? They did not. Well, she did not uh, reveal that if yeah. she knew it, but I believe that's a great question. I mean, I think, yeah. <laughs> I is mean, it here also, on earth i believe it was okay. but I, but she did not specify um and they've done they did a they have a different um they have a bunch of different sessions they have a remote viewing session of reptilians on mars and there's of and of bases on the moon i haven't listened to those yet but there is this is the thing is the crazy thing about going down the rabbit hole with the farsight group they've done so many of these sessions they have been doing using this remote viewing to do detailed research to figure out what the heck is going on. And, and this guy, Courtney Brown is similar to, uh, he's been communicating with an alien I think named Harvey since for years and years and years. And there's, I haven't watched the videos on that yet. I haven't gone down that rabbit hole, but it kind of reminded me of, of you and your communication with your, uh, friend, What's the, what's your friend's name? Oh, my, 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 like my inner guide. Oh, I just call him Charlie, but he's, he's changed names over the years. And I start to wonder, maybe Charlie was this mantis. I don't know. I'm so confused at this point, but yeah, you, what do you, do you call Do you say my friend, Charlie? Is that how you refer to Yeah. Him? That's a blog on my website, my friend or uh, my God, Charlie, because Charlie has been 
a presence in my life. And, and it's not that it's always been Charlie. It's just, we cho I chose the name Charlie just because it felt friendly and, you know, comforting to me. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's actually changed. It's not even gender specific. For a long time, I felt like the, it was a female influence, but um, yeah, just kind of an inner guide that's not really vocal, but sort of implants guided wisdom or something in my brain that I can translate into English, which and Tibetans call that insights. Insight meditation practice can facilitate that kind of communication with your higher self. Um, so, so, um, so what possessed you to name this this entity, this source of insight, with a name? When and how? When did this start? Oh my goodness! I, is I don't have any beginning memory. It goes all the way back. I, um, my first memory, I think, was me having a tantrum in the crib, and suddenly I was just enveloped by this entirely warm, comforting uh, presence, but there was nobody I could see. It, I was just suddenly, you know, overcome with this sense of it's okay. Um, and that, I mean, that progressed into language later on. I was able to translate what was being conveyed. And uh, sometimes I used to think I could almost see Charlie. <laughs> but that that's a whole story. And all that's on my website if uh, for the curious. But um, well, I always felt like he was just he or she was that was the innermost wisest part of me. It, I didn't really feel like it, it was a separate entity. I felt like I was channeling my higher self or a higher consciousness somehow. Okay. Well, the reason I bring it up um, is because this guy, Courtney Brown, has apparently been communicating with Harvey, this alien Harvey, for many years. And like I said, I haven't gone down the rabbit hole with that, which it's, but it's very, it's kind of similar to uh, Alex Collier, who says he's been communicating with a couple Andromedan aliens for many years. But uh, they did uh, remote viewing sessions on Elon Musk, and they wow. they did a deep dive into Elon Musk. And and when they, I believe all three of their remote viewers, when they did a deep mind pro of Elon Musk, they saw another entity in there with him. Oh and, my! Yeah, and it was, uh, and it. And now that as you describe how Charlie is with you, it sounds it really they sound very similar, not I mean, not like the similar in necessarily personality, but just like. Yeah, they saw an entity inside Elon Musk's mind with him, helping him and, and helping him figure stuff out throughout his life. So I don't, I don't know what to do with that. But, well, you know, it kind of what's coming to my mind is is the whole Hinduism, you know, they believe that the higher self is often, you know, uh, depicted as someone else living inside of us. You can see a lot of the Hindu paintings, the, the um, you know, there's Rama and uh, Krishna. And, uh, but, you know, a lot of people have these images of these avatars in, in their third eye area, in their forehead. So it's like this little wise person that, that rides around with us who is actually our higher truest self connected to the to the god consciousness mm -hmm. um, and it's and i guess it is depicted and in my case maybe experienced as a, another consciousness within me so yeah well i mean if telepathy is real it opens up the possibility of i mean so many things could be it's like anything could be real we could have all entities sending information into our minds they could be possibly we could i mean i've I, when i meditate now i'm often i am like like who else is here who else is listening mm -hmm. i mean i'm i'm just like um and uh, one of the fascinating things uh really fascinating with the uh what, what the great one of the great things about this far i mean they have so much information this guy courtney brown he seems to believe he's got a lot of this figured out, a lot of figured out a lot of what's going on with Earth, the history of it, 
the relationship between us and our souls and what earth is, what the different alien groups are. And so it's even, you know, I'm not claiming he necessarily has all the truth, but I love people who have a narrative that they think fits all the stuff together. Yeah. Just to put the to puzzle with. together. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and he's written uh, a book, has he? I don't think so. It's mainly, but he does, um, he has podcasts that he's putting out. So I think, and they're doing like monthly uh, disclosure updates. Like I just listened. I, I wish I could play it. I don't think it's, I had to pay to get access to their back, um, back site, but I was able to play this trailer because it's still, it's up on YouTube, but I'd love to, um, I mean, I'll, I, I'll see what I can, uh, what I'm allowed to, to play on here, but, um, but yeah, they, he has, um, he has, he, he claims to, I mean, all right, this, this I'm going to just summarize the basic gist of what he says is going on. Okay. Uh, we are, um, we are not our bodies. You know, he, he says we are, he calls them not, he doesn't call them souls. He has a different word because, but he calls them, this word is isby. It's, but it basically is like the concept of a soul. We are beings that are eight with free will that are able to do stuff. And we are, we, we actually cannot be killed. Uh, our, so when we get, when our body is destroyed, our isby he calls it, um, it, and we go into that, uh, and often people see a light right after they get die that he says, this was his thing. I mean, I'm not claiming this is true, but he claims when you see that light, he says there are some not so friendly aliens. He says there's two groups of aliens. There's that the friendly ones that they work with, and then there's more malicious ones that seem to be the ones that they dominate Earth. The more malicious ones control most of Earth, and Earth they want us to keep on coming back into these bodies. I guess because they use human society like still like slaves, essentially. Um, he says this is basically a prison planet. Yeah. And when we but it, but they're working everyone there is a group working on trying to free uh humanity from this and he says I mean gosh this is such a rabbit hole but he says right. that, that what what happens is we we leave our bodies and then there is sort of like they try to convince us to come back into another body on earth because it sort of serves their purposes. So they try to, they put us, they say, when you go into the light, that's where they zap your memory. So they can sort of keep you from remembering all the full truth of who you are. They can't kill you. You are an immortal being that, um, that has a, you know, and you know how people, when they, sometimes they have these near death experiences, they say, suddenly they understood everything. They see right. everything. Well, he says, that is who you really are. That is and but they you're kept here it's sort of a malicious act to keep to prevent your memory from fully seeing everything about what you know and who you are and where you come from your full past lives and everything and yeah that's kind of like um and he says there's uh they they do talk a lot about the reptilian aliens underground and they it seems that the bulk of them are pretty malicious uh but there's definitely some that are not. And it seems like the Lacerta, when they did this, it was, she was not perceived as this like evil, evil entity. She was more like seen like a queen, just really protective of her species and, and kind of afraid of like, for one, their location being known. I mean, it, I really felt like, oh, this makes total sense that she is almost terrified of all of humanity, knowing exactly where she and her city and her people live. Um, oh, an interesting moment in the Lacerta when she saw, uh, Lacerta, Lacerta had a human, like right there with a redheaded male human, uh, subject wow. was like right with her. So it was like, um, that was kind of fascinating and, um, yeah. And, uh, gosh, the rabbit holes upon rabbit holes that I've gone down, um, 
<laughs> you know, it's just amazing. I mean, the, the way you're describing Lacerta, it, it, you know, the, the vision that comes to my mind is the J.R.R. Tolkien's in the trilogy where the hobbits, you know, go down into the mountain, into the inner mountain, and they discover, I guess, I don't know who it was, Frodo, I guess, discovered the dragon sleeping in, yeah. you know, mountains of gold. Something almost um, iconic about that image in our psyche. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting. It's um, kind of reminds me of all the, the you know, um, the call of the, who was it that did the Campbell, did all the, the iconic, what do you call them? Psychological, we all share certain, uh, certain icons. Not That's not the right word, but yeah it's not coming to me at the, the hero moment. the fool yeah. the the wise the you know we all have these these um parts of us and there's something iconic about that dragon uh mm -hmm. that seems to be part of us interesting yeah and this mind yeah. probing thing reminds me of the of the star trek you know spock's mind meld did you ever watch him do a mind <laughs> meld yeah <laughs> yeah so much in the in the literature and movies that we see and read uh, that's actually coming from something that might be actually true. So, yeah, yeah, crazy, crazy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's a uh, that's a fascinating uh, thing. Resource. I mean, a whole new source of <clears throat> of an interesting theory for me to study this. Uh, the Farsight Institute. The remote viewing of all this. Yeah. Stuff. Oh, archetypes. Getting. Archetypes. Archetype. That's the name yeah. I was looking for. Yeah, the word. Yeah, this is great. I'm going to check that out more. The um, the Farsight Institute. Uh, um, and you said there's a there's a ten dollar monthly thing to have access to all their. Yeah, files. ten dollars a month, and you can just watch all their videos. And they, you can go to farsight.org. You can see trailers for all their stuff. So they have all sorts of things on disclosure. They did President Xi of uh, China. I haven't watched that one. Um, Vladimir Putin. I haven't watched that one. They did something on Noah's Ark, Puma Punku, Gobekli Tepe, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, Lao Tzu, Pope. I, I listened to the one all about the Pope and Jesus and the crucifixion. Oh, oh man, they got, a, they got a crazy theory <laughs> on that one. Uh, they did a, a thing. A, they did a deep remote viewing on the Pope to find out, does he know the truth about aliens or not? And then does his inner circle know about the truth about aliens or not? And the the pope's uh circle of cardinals council of cardinals do they know about it and they all knew about the aliens does not surprise me at all yeah and uh but they have i, I won't even say what they said it'll it'll upset people <laughs> okay well <laughs> boy for all, you get all that for ten dollars a month i mean oh it is I think yeah. it's well worth 10 bucks to spend a month just like inhaling this stuff if you like um I mean, I'm I'm just desperate to know the truth. I just want to know what is the truth. I know I am convinced these UFOs are really seen. So if these UFOs are really seen, they're really flying around Earth, then there has to be a story. <laughs> there has to be some story that explains how these UFOs fit into human history. And I just I'm not interested in the wrong ones. I just want to know the real ones. I want the explanation. And if these remote viewers, if remote viewing actually works and these guys seem to be honestly trying to figure this stuff out, then it is the ultimate source. It could be the ultimate source. And um, so that's what I'm hoping these guys, they, they seem to be dedicated to truth. They, they seem to be just wanting to be real, the real, the truth. They, they have too many people involved to be like, you know, it, it doesn't seem like. I don't know. I mean, I guess there's a chance these guys are under the control of the CIA, I suppose, or something, some group. But I mean, it just seems that if remote viewers are seeing the same things without actually, you know, communicating with each other, I mean, that's that's kind of 
that that seems like true to me. You know, that could whatever they're seeing at the same time would have some basis in reality i don't know yeah well i mean that's the thing these the the whole point of having three different remote viewers all do the same target is you can compare their notes and right. compare and they don't come up with identical stuff but their stuff correlates and and also you have other people doing this in the world i mean i used to talk about elizabeth april a lot she is someone who claims to be able to do this kind of thing she claims to have done remote viewing and telepathically visited and talked to reptilians inside the earth on the moon. And but the thing is, whenever you listen to Elizabeth April, it's only her. She has there's no one else that is confirming uh, any of her experiences. So it's all limited by one person's ability to interpret what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And but also I do want to say Elizabeth April's uh stories of everything that she explains going on it correlates with the farsight institute in many many ways she talks about us being star seeds you know that's a phrase you hear in the new age world but it it, it fits with the farsight's thing that we are somehow we are beings that are not really of this three-dimensional body we are beings that can come in and out of bodies um so there's definitely correlations there yeah and uh, does the Farsight Institute give, you know, like classes on how to do, do. Uh, viewing? Really? Yeah, you can learn. And uh, they even have. Um, yeah, you can learn from that from their remote viewers. The far Well, their remote viewers teach it. And I guess you you set up one on one relationships with the teachers. The Farsight doesn't actually they don't take any money from the they say they, they don't. It's so it's really you. you but they facilitate you connecting with their uh, remote viewing specialists and yeah and you can just learn it from them wow um, and they i watched one of the classes or one of the sessions that courtney brown was teaching one of their current really skilled remote viewers and it was you know from several years ago and it was clear that this guy he was teaching was new to it and it was fascinating to watch courtney coach him on how to do it and how to just there's like just a sort of little practices they do how they just allow themselves to when they get an image, just go with it, you know, draw what you have. And he sort of really coaches them on how to just trust the the raw image or information coming in and not jump to a deduction. Like it's very easy for your brain when you see a, um, you start to see the image of say a, a building with a fence around it, your brain might try to jump to, oh, it's area 51. But you got, and that's a deduction right. sort of specific. And so it's like you got to stop your brain from doing that and just be like, you see a structure, you see a border around it. And he's like, you got to go slow and you just, you always separate your deduction, which are really guesses, really specific guesses from the actual information you're getting. And if, you, if you're really disciplined about that, it's amazing. Um, yeah, I think you'd really have to be careful to watch your, not to be jumping to conclusions. I think that's what you're you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. jump yeah. to these. Your your brain just starts to fill in. Oh, this is. Oh, I'm clearly doing a remote viewing of Jesus or you know something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just but, to uh, just stay yeah. almost as if you're just like a camera, you know, looking at what is yeah. not. But I tell you, the uh, remote viewing they did of Elon Musk when they did yeah. the deep brain dive into him it was in, it just it it was so incredible because elon musk's brain was just they were just like oh my gosh it's like a palace there's so <laughs> much information it's so organized wow. and they were like describing him as being like uh, the, on the spectrum of autism and they were just uh, one was going to so much detail of all these different topics and then she encountered the other being inside of Elon's mind. Wow. But by the end of it, this woman, when she was done, after she had done this deep dive mind pro, she's like, this really seems like Elon Musk. <laughs> she's like, See, that would be my guess. <laughs> that I just did Elon Musk. But um incredible. It, yeah. yeah I, think, I think you've talked me into it. I'm gonna have to to do the ten dollars a month and just start doing some probing into their mind. What's going on? Yeah. This well, it's um, I mean, I'm not like trying to like promote them. I'm just searching for the truth. But uh, yeah, I it's it's fascinating. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So, all so right, we're, well, we're just we about done. done. I just wanted to do you think we could do uh, three breaths of a meditation just to just to get grounded? And oh, yeah. I mean, we can do 
however long you want. I'm, you know, if you want to do five minutes or you want to do something really brief, whatever. Well, I don't want to run too much over time. I know the listeners are probably expecting an hour, but yeah, let's just see where it goes. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Let's start to just take a couple of nice deep breaths. So much information about aliens and agendas. Our mind can kind of feel like scrambled eggs sometimes. So meditation, I think, is essential at this point to help us keep our feet on the floor, keep our, keep our balance over our feet. So let's just breathe for a minute. Try and follow one breath from the bottom all the way to the top. Recognize how that feels when you feel satiated and then just release it, relax it, let it go. Let's begin to circle our wagons right around where we are bring our awareness into our immediate environment. And this is all we know to be real, right here, right now. Breathing in and breathing out. Notice any anxiety where you might be holding it, tight shoulders, tight hands. Just scan your body real quick and just notice where you're holding that tension, that tension of don't know. We don't know anything. We know that we're right here, right now. See if you can pick up any sounds around you. Motor running, bird chirps, cars. Things that just come into our awareness and then fade away. This present moment awareness is absolute treasure. This is what we have. This is what we can rely on. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Doro. Have a great week. You too.